So yeah, uh, this is one of the uh, the big cryptos, and uh, it pretty much just exploded. And apparently it's because of this guy right here. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the whole story is. That's why we're going to watch the video. But uh, we'll see what this is. Crypto Armageddon is here. The biggest players in the world are at war. They're fighting it out. And I'm here to tell you who won and what's next. Now, I'm going to be honest. I called this yesterday. I warned you guys that FTX, second largest exchange, might be insolvent. And people called me crazy. They said, no way the guy who described all of DeFi as a Ponzi scheme could be bad. Sam Bankman Freed, he's just too smart. FTX, after all, is endorsed by Tom Brady. What could go wrong with another celebrity endorsement? People like. I'm honestly always so shocked that people invest so much money into a currency that is backed up and defended by literally nothing. It is astonishing to me that this happens. I can, I, I can understand throwing a couple hundred bucks in there, you know, just to see what happens just for the memes, you know? Like, you buy, like, a hundred bucks worth of Dogecoin and, you know, you set it up for your kids so you can go to college one day. But, like, to actually put a lot of real money into this, into any of these, is just unbelievable to me. I still cannot believe that people take this seriously at all. Here we go. Larry David backed FTX. Surely your funds are safe. Oh, absolutely. Well, turns out they were actually in danger all along. Who could have and guessed? things are looking very bad. So I'm going to explain to you this entire mess very quick. But bear in mind, this is a very dynamic situation. Things are changing by the hour. But let's get into it. Okay, let's Once see. Once there existed two rival crypto exchanges, Binance and FTX. The number and FTX is the one that bought uh, TSM. That's why they're TSM FTX. One and number two crypto exchanges. Mm -hmm. And their CEOs, CZ and SBF, or Sam Bankman Fried, hate each other. That's okay. an important part of this story. But things were calm at first, for the most part. They played nice for years. Until recently, SBF decided to take a pot shot at his competitors' attempts to work with regulators and said, uh, he is allowed to go to DC, right? Implying okay. that CZ was banned. Now, he didn't know it at the time, but SBF set off World War III in crypto with this tweet, and he might have signed his own funeral. Because a few days later, a report came out from Coindesk leaking FTX's financial balance sheet. And what it showed wow. is that they had a lot of money but it was sort of locked up in all these token projects they were a part of, most notably in FTT token, Solana, and other projects that they were behind. And they couldn't sell the projects anytime they wanted to. In other words, even though they had billions of dollars worth of assets, they weren't very liquid. And it was arguable that some of the coins weren't that valuable. So they couldn't- Well, they're, none of them are. Like, I, I, how, how would any, like, I, I, I just, I, I'm just so, why would anybody put money into this shit? Like, I, I, I just, I don't understand. It's monopoly fucking money. Of course it, of course it's insolvent. If $14 billion, yeah, I can write that number down on a sheet of paper, but what does that even mean? It's like having 5 billion wow gold. It's nuts, man. I think that a lot of these people, like, they just kind of hope that it'll get big enough to where people will take it seriously finally, you know? Get access to these funds immediately. Meanwhile, yeah. they had huge liabilities of $8 billion. That's a 7. lot. 7.4 billion of which were loans. Now, Dirty Bubble Media, who is the mm -hmm. person who caught out the collapse of Celsius, which we've talked about extensively, picked this up in a scathing report. In it, he suggested that FTX and Alameda Research might be insolvent because all their money was locked up in these tokens that might be worthless. And if everyone tried to withdraw their money all at once, the company could likely not pay off their liabilities. Now, CZ saw- I love how these crypto places are going through the exact same problem that real banks went through. And like you start like, so what is that FDIC? So like you have like 250 grand insured? Man, I wonder why they did that. Well, it's because this exact fucking thing happened like a hundred years ago. Yeah, this same shit has happened before with these other things, with like making different fucking, evaluating things differently. Yeah, it's a fucking bank run. It, it's so funny for me to see people that, uh, that celebrate decentralization, and then the moment that something happens as a result of decentralization, they're like, oh, this is fucking, this is awful. What the hell is this? 
this and decided oh to take an opportunity to strike against his biggest rival. He right. announced that day that because of recent revelations, which because of that report, quote, we have decided to liquidate any remaining FTT on our books. Now, this was massive given that FTX's number one holding was FTT. Their competitor Binance is saying that they're going to dump up to $2.1 billion worth of, of it on money. the open market, causing that price to plummet. Now, all of a sudden, you don't even have illiquid funds. You just have none of those funds. So even though CZ said that this was not a move against a competitor, it kind of looked like it was, right? Of course. Uh, <laughs> he just says he's going to sell it all. And then everybody else starts selling it because they lose all the confidence in it. Holy fuck, man. Oh, I love this. It's only worth money. You try and trade it for money that it's not worth money for anymore. I know. Of course, he's going to say Shocker, that. In reality, he knew it. what yeah. he was doing. Now, immediately, Absolutely. this stoked all sorts of fears about the solvency of FTX. Of course. And the fear spread like wildfire. Is FTX the next Luna? Is FTX the next Celsius? And people started to withdraw funds like crazy. I wonder how many of these it's going to take that literally go down in flames for people to think, maybe I shouldn't invest my money in something that's not real. Like, you know, like, I wonder how many of these is it going to take? Because at a certain point, like, I felt bad for people whenever this first originally started happening because, like, you know, it, they're not really as experienced with it. People don't really have as good of an understanding. But we've been in this now for, like, five years. It's been five years that this shit has been happening, and people still can't fucking figure it out. It's sad. It's happened so, yeah, it's happened so many times now. Like, I don't feel bad for anybody at this point. It's like buying real estate in the Madra. Yeah, it's like if you're buying real estate on the moon and three other real estate agencies have closed down that sold houses on the moon and there's a fourth real estate agency that's trying to sell houses on the moon and you buy one and then the fourth one shuts down, I don't feel sorry for you. You should have, you should have been more prudent. You should have thought a little bit more. What do you consider real? Most modern currencies are fiat currencies. They're not backed by gold. They're backed by government mandate. You know what? And I, 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 I guarantee to you, a government mandate is worth a whole lot more than some numbers in a fucking computer. Because the government mandate has AK-47s, M16s, nuclear bombs, and tanks behind it. And the fucking thing in the computer has got more numbers. Yeah, I, I wonder which one is going to be a little bit more stable. Just think about it for like three seconds before you want to use the fiat currency argument. Holy shit. Which, honestly, was the logical move to make. Yeah. The problem with crypto exchanges right now is that because there's no monetary insurance on your money, even if the probability of... <laughs> that's FDIC. You know, that's what you always see that at the bank. This is why. An exchange going bust is less than 1% you still have to take all your money out because if they do go bust, you lose everything. If it doesn't go bust, you only lose a fraction of a percent on trading fees for yeah. being cautious. And so there's really nothing to risk by taking your money out. And there's right. everything to risk by keeping it in. So basically that means bank runs are- Yeah, it's like logically you, you don't want to hold. It makes sense. Extremely common these days. And a lot of these exchanges- Well, I wonder why bank runs are so common. Maybe because a couple of banks burn down. It's like you hear, like, you know, fucking Bank of America burned down, Wells Fargo burned down, and you've got your money in Chase, and somebody says, hey, there's a fire next to Chase, and you're like, I I'm going to, I, I, I got to go. I'll be right back, guys. I've, I've got I've, I've to do something at the bank. Of course. They're really not ready for it. In fact, Sam Bankman-Fried himself said that a lot of crypto exchanges are secretly insolvent, uh, which was a bit of weird foreshadowing. But at first, I think that's probably true. I, I would agree with that. First, it looked like FTX wouldn't go insolvent. A lot of people said this was very unlikely since in the past they've looked very strong. And that's what they basically said. They said, look, it's no big deal. This is all FUD, nothing to worry about. Alameda Research, who is closely tied to FTX, actually responded about these uh, leaks in their financial balances. And they said, quote, they have $10 billion worth of assets that aren't reflected there. And that also they have returned most of their loans by now. 
And okay. most shocking of all was that they offered CZ to buy all of his FTT off market for $22 each near the current price. Okay. Now, the reason for this is obviously to show that, okay, we're not scared. We've got the money to back this up. And if you really aren't trying to sink us as a competitor, you'll be happy to do this private deal, get a better price and not impact our price. It would save both parties a lot of headache. But unsurprisingly, because these guys hate each other, CZ wasn't having it. He said, well, he obviously, I mean, because you've got to think about. So there's two big companies and it's like if the other company burns down, well, then everybody else is going to go to your company. So it really doesn't even have to be any sort of a big conspiracy. It just has to be people acting in their in their own self-interest. He was going to stay in the free market, signaling that he fully intended to squash the price of FTT, and yeah. he did. FTT dropped over the next 24 hours 30%. Jesus. And not only that, reports started showing that FTX withdrawals were increasing. The bank run really was happening like CZ wanted. Wow. And this is where we have to go back to Alameda's CEO, what they said about having $10 billion worth of assets because there's some really key caveats about those claims. What are those $10 billion worth of assets? Beanie babies. Are they cash? Because if they are, they're probably fine. But if there's something N like NFTs. more FTT token or more of Sam's other projects that he can't sell, well, that's gonna be a significant problem for them. When Isn't it crazy that these people have a balance sheet full of fake money and it's in the billions of dollars? I feel like this is like the emperor's new clothes. How How is anybody even beginning to take this seriously? And everybody's running and asking for their crypto uh. back and they just don't have it. So questions were flying about what exactly FTX was doing with your money when you deposited it. Yeah. Were they just giving it to Alameda Research, which is sort of acting like a hedge fund and trading with your crypto, trying to make a big return? Or were they, they keeping your funds safe and just practicing proper risk management? Well, this oh, is- I wonder what they're doing. No, they don't give a fuck about you. That's why they're operating in crypto and not an actual bank, is so they can do stuff like this and you can't get them where everyone just basically waited with bated breath to see what was going to happen next. Uh-oh, this looks pretty bad. They froze withdrawals. And at the same time, the team basically went totally silent and people commented. There's a lot again about this one too. Yeah, so like there was a, like this, so like this whole thing already happened about like 100 years ago, like 90 years ago. Like, yeah, yeah, we, we had this one, yeah on how bad this looks on them. Why aren't they speaking? And people started to circle back to old clips why. of Sam Bankman free describing DeFi and crypto as basically a Ponzi scheme positively. And they wondered, how did any of us trust this guy? I, I think I'm I've been wondering that for many years. I've been many, yeah, I, 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 welcome to reality. Yeah, we watched this interview already. Myself is like a fairly cynical person, and yep. that was so much more cynical <laughs> yeah, than I, how yeah. I would have described farming. Like, you're just like, well, I'm in the Ponzi business, and it's pretty At good. No point have, and did any of this require any sort of like economic case? It's just like other people right. put money in the box, and so I'm going to too, and then it's more valuable, so I'm going to put more money in. And at no point in this, yeah, yeah, what a surprise that this eventually was going to fall like this house of cards was eventually going to collapse who could have possibly guessed michael did it seem to like describe any sort of like economic purpose so yeah well how do you not apply that same logic to any crypto in any circumstance i don't know i feel like you basically can things are looking really grim but if you have your money locked up on FTX and you're clinched up right now, take a deep breath um, because things look like they might be fine. Okay. Although it's coming from a very unlikely source. CZ announced only hours after FTX paused withdrawals that they were going to buy them. Binance was going to buy FTX. The what a fucking play. Wow. 
Wow. Just buying out the number two competitor. Yeah, there we fucking go, boys. Oh, wait. They pulled out on it? Oh, it's not. Oh, that makes sense why it's non-binding. Oh, okay. That is really cute. Wow. Number one crypto exchange buying the number two out. Quote, this afternoon, FTX asked for our help. There is a significant liquidity crunch to protect users. We signed a non-binding LOI intending to fully acquire FTX.com and help mm -hmm. cover the liquidity crunch. Now, I, I'm at a loss for words. This is insane. If you're not sure what's just happened, CZ basically set his competitor on fire by stoking rumors of insolvency yeah. and then showed up with water buckets later, you know, basically acting like the hero, saving the day. He yeah, people do this shit all... Yeah. This is what Elon Musk tried to do with Twitter. Remember whenever he said it was full of bots to lower the value of it whenever he was going to buy it? But the difference is that there are laws in real life in, on, on, with, with stocks. So you can't just go and do that. It's like business one-on-one. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, you want to, you know, go and put a bunch of one-star reviews on like this one place, uh, on like some other restaurant or something like that. Yeah. Now he's like, fuck it. Wait, yeah, there's laws IRL. So Elon Musk is in jail? No, because they forced him to pay it at a certain fucking price, man. It's called good business. Exactly. And it, it's, it's so funny for me to see, again, the like crypto space going through these exact same things. Holy fuck. He just bought FTX out for likely pennies on the dollar in a move that's honestly going to go down as a bit of business genius and also yeah. cutthroat strategy. I mean, this was a shark move. Now, yeah, in the next was. few months, you're going to see SBF and CZ try to spin this whole thing as if there's no conflict between them and there was never any problems. Oh that was just my a God. But don't believe it. This beef was very real. Only days ago, CZ was saying that we won't pretend to make love after divorce and that, quote, we won't support people who lobby against other industry players behind their backs. So very much Damn. these guys did not like each other and one of them just won the war. So the fact SBF let himself get bought out by probably the man he hates most in crypto just shows you how badly they must have been short on cash or the crypto that was being withdrawn. Yeah, I wonder why. I mean, why. I promise you they exhausted every other option. In fact, reports are already coming out that FTX was courting basically everyone in Silicon Valley seeking more than a billion dollars, but that by mid-Tuesday, the hole in their balance sheet looked to be significantly deeper. Well, yeah, I bet it was a fucking black hole. Absolutely, it'll be 100% investigation. Well, it could have also, they could have not wanted to buy it for like, you know, they didn't want to get investigated by the government for like monopoly shit, but I don't even know if that would have happened. And in the end, they had to sell out to their biggest enemy. Now, what does all of this mean? Because for one, this represents a huge centralization in the crypto space. You know, everyone wants to be decentralized. Well, the number one- The first thing that something that's decentralized does is it centralizes itself. That's why every single time that you have a quote, free market, every time this fucking happens, you have somebody with a lot of resources in one way or another that comes and controls it and makes it not free anymore. This is, uh, this is a mirage. Every time that you get closer to it, you just realize that it's farther away. On buying out the number two is sort of a big problem if that's your goal. There also remain huge questions like how they could have been out billions of dollars in the first place and how exactly they were safeguarding customer funds if suddenly they find themselves at a multi-billion dollar hole in their balance sheet after people actually look to get their money out. It seems to be yet another lesson that you should not trust these crypto exchanges as far as you can throw them and that no matter what their CEOs say about not having to worry about anything, what do you think the CEO is going to say? What is he, is he going to say? Like, yeah, guys, uh, tomorrow at 2 p.m., we're basically going to fire everybody and close up shop. Hopefully I can get out of the country before the government uh, fucking uh, before the government arrests me for fraud. So we're going to see what happens, but I'll, I'll let you all know tomorrow. 
the story has developed past this already no it seems like yes it, it has already it has already developed past this and they're not buying it anymore yeah ftx is not getting bought out they're just letting it sink all on its own that that's what it seems stupid people getting scammed yeah uh, what about the collective hallucination that crypto was it, li listen crypto is probably one of the most compelling it, it it's it's so easy to get stupid people to give you their money just tell them that they're smart for doing it and then they'll give you their money that's it that's all you have to do you just have to make somebody think that they're smart for giving you their money and then they're going to give you all their money that, that's about it and it, that's what crypto does because like it is the it is the fundamental american dream to make a lot of money by being smarter than everyone else but simultaneously doing nothing you didn't create anything you didn't solve a problem you didn't create some sort of improvement in people's lives you just somehow now have a, a lot of numbers on a computer this is the fundamental real american dream and so it's not a surprise to see how compelling this is for people they will continue getting fooled by it because they want to believe it so much i could make a lot of religion parallels huh it's not the first time this won't be the last there could be significant liquidity crises that they're lying to you about mm -hmm. and on that note i want to remind you that this deal is non-binding and Binance can get out if the due diligence doesn't pan out or if they just don't want to do it. So if you're invested in FTX and didn't get your money out when I and others started telling you guys that uh, they were likely to be insolvent, it's not time to relax. Binance isn't necessarily going to save you. Yeah, they didn't. And you should explore all your options because your funds might still be in danger if this deal doesn't work they out. Are. As for FTX US, I have no idea what's going on with you guys. As far as I know, they just bought out FTX.com, although the deal is still pending. So who knows what's going on with that? This is just a wild end to one of the craziest weeks of crypto. World War III basically broke out and a winner was decided. The true main character revealed himself. So that's it basically seems that it. Way. I'll see you in a bit. I've been working super hard on a big investigation behind the scenes. I'll tell you guys more about that later, but uh, just wanted to keep you up in the loop. All right, see ya. Let me go ahead and link to you guys this video. CoffeeZilla makes a million of these fucking things. I love seeing them, man. Oh my God. I still have money in the FTX app. Do I need to move it ASAP? I don't know, man. Just do whatever you want. Like I, I'm, I, I, listen, I've got, I bought and sold crypto before myself. Okay. Uh, and the reason why I was so, the reason, the truth is what is the one thing that interests me and motivates me more than anybody else, anything else? scamming people and that's why i was going to make a crypto exchange back in 2011 2012 because i saw that it's like how are people this fucking dumb i i, I might as well just get in this yeah i'm not this is not financial but i don't know what you fuck you should do yeah of course yeah why is that what starts sounding like jordan pearson i'm not I'm not, I'm not get the fuck out of here i've listened to that dude before tsm is sponsored by ftx what about them uh they probably have a lot of their money uh i, I don't actually i don't know like i I've, i have no fucking idea i was thinking like maybe they they paid them in cash but maybe they paid them in this fucking currency i don't know if that's the case i think tsm's got to change their name again oh my fucking god man it's so it, it's so scary naming rights with tsm you can drop your own gambling website. It's basically the same thing. Well, why not just do both, man? You have like the whole vertical integration. You have like your own, uh, you have like your own cryptocurrency website. You have your own gambling website. And then we could start a funeral home for all the people that kill themselves, right? That'll be great. It's a little through, it's a little hat trick. You got them from cradle to grave. It's perfect. Let me go ahead and link you guys the video. Yeah, there you go. You're going to become, yeah, you'll become a fucking billionaire. Oh, I love these. I think that again, people that are stupid enough to put their money into this kind of stuff. I mean, listen, like a fool and his money are soon parted and they were lucky to be together in the first place. Listen, if you do stuff like this and you put money into shit like this, that's not insured. And you think that because you, you followed somebody on Twitter for seven months, you think you know what they're going to do. 
I just don't give a fuck. Like, you are a moron, and you are gonna lose your money sooner or later, man. That's all there is to it. That was brutal? Yeah, it's also fucking true, isn't it? That's the best part. Yeah, so all Monopoly properties from Monopoly currency, do you think my money's at risk? Well, I don't know. I mean, how big were the properties? Some people have so much money, they don't care. They just put it, put some in. Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, like, if you want to invest into cryptocurrency the same as people invest into, you know, any other type of, like, meme thing, it's, it's okay. But, like, don't go in and expect this to be legitimate. Don't go in and expect for something crazy not to happen. Because whenever things are deregulated, that also means that you're going to have a lot of bandits. And... They're going to run off with your money. Like, look at Ice Poseidon, ran off with your money. Luna Coin, that fuck, I forgot even what happened with that, what the, the result with this is, but I'm pretty sure there's nobody who's a millionaire from that thing anymore. And so, except for probably the people that ran it. And everything else is NFTs are real bad too. If you're buying NFTs, listen, like I have explained, I, I think that if, if you, there is nothing more that I can say. I cannot, like, explain it in a different way. I can't go, oh, well, you know, you're wrong about it because of this. No. If you're going to do this, that's it. I mean, I, I like, you, you're, you have gone beyond. I cannot reason you out of a position you did not reason yourself into. Uh, I think that's the main thing. People invest in crypto because of Bitcoin FOMO? Well, yeah, because they're stupid. Like, that's the thing. Again, and it's because they think they're smart. And there's a smarter person telling them that if you give me all your money, you'll be the next Bitcoin billionaire. Absolutely. Again, if you want stupid people to give you their money, just tell them that they're smart. That's all there is to it. NFT is such a weird movement. I still don't get it. Yeah, that's because there's nothing to get. A Pokemon card is worth 400k, by the way. Yeah, because it's an actual physical fucking object. The, the, the difference between Pokemon cards and things like this is that at least a Pokemon card is a physical object. The, the fundamental digital scarcity is a non sequitur. There is no such thing as digital scarcity. There's no reason why there can't just be two of something. That's the whole good thing about digital stuff is because you can just have as many of them as you want. So at any point where there is any value applied to something that is digital, you have now entered the realm outside of reality. The Feldrake, yeah. I'm not trying to be a fuckboy, but giving your business education, knowing you're educated, core tech blockchain disrupts modern fintech. First time... Um, uh, in which is the cortex? Uh, I don't know. What What are you talking about? Are you talking about like, I don't care. Are you thinking, is this one of those things where a crypto person thinks that it's because the banks are trying to make crypto look bad or something like this? I'm just kind of confused about this. Yeah. Is it like, oh, you know, mainstream finance is trying to shit on crypto or something? I, I, I have no idea, man. Bruce intelligent can be it won't be in all directions well the thing is that it doesn't take a fucking genius to imagine that in currency with no fucking backing no regulation and no accountability can immediately go belly up at any moment and you have no control over it whatsoever you don't have to be a fucking genius to figure this out you're wrong on this banks are using the same technology because it works cheaper than traditional methods i don't give a fuck i i I, I don't care. I don't care what technology the banks are using. I'm saying that if you buy one of these fucking coins that's set up by one of these guys and you lose all your money, you had it coming. That's all I'm saying. I have zero fucking sympathy for these kinds of people, man. I'm going to be honest. Zero fucking sympathy. Also, I saw this uh, got uploaded here. Twitch just killed World of Warcraft. So I wanted to make an update to this because obviously this has been a... Uh, make sure, by the way, guys, uh, where the fuck is it? Where is that video? Make sure to give CoffeeZilla a like and a sub. This guy, I know it sounds crazy, but this guy actually does real work. 
So uh, he's he's one of the only people on a, actually there's a number of other people, but I think he's one of the best ones at you know trying to have some level of accountability and even if not accountability, have awareness of these things because a lot of his viewers and a lot of everybody here uh, puts money into this shit. So yeah, he does real work. Imagine that.